This DIY live scope only cost me $5. That's right, for $5, you will be able to put more fish in your boat. Stay tuned for that. Welcome to Walking on Water. I'm Anthony. My channel is about fishing, fellowship, and faith. See, God created this world for us and gave us all the senses we need to dwell here. I'm just trying to show you another way, the way he intended. If this interests you, then I'll tell you like Christ told Simon Peter, follow me and I'll make you a fisherman of men. Facts. So are you coming? <laughs> Method works. Always stay close to the promises of God. Welcome back to another episode of Walking on Water. I got out here late this evening. I'm at Sharon Harris Lake in North Carolina. I'm going to show y'all how, how I go about catching these fish. DIY live scope style. This DIY live scope only cost me $5. Y'all can check out the receipt. $4.58 is what I paid. Let's get it. All right, so it's pretty windy out here today, but we're going to make it happen anyway. Now, before I get to talking about how to make your own live scope, understand why it's important to use this method that I'm about to show. Now we're in the summer to fall transition. And what does that mean? It goes from summer to fall. So what does that mean for your water? That means you're going from hot water and, uh, and the night temperatures are going to get colder, which in, in return, it lowers the temperature of water. Now all the places that you will find your fish, they're normally in you know deeper water holding the structure. But during the transition period, that's when they start chasing bait fish, you know, balls of bait fish across open water. Now you can find them still on structure because that's what I'm gonna try to do today. Uh, but this method is, will help you on structure and it'll help you keep up with the Roman fish that's out here. So let's talk about transitions and when it deals with fish. Now that simply just means that from summer to fall, the fish are moving, they're transitioning. They're just like any other uh, animals out here. You, th you think about the herds of elk and buffalo that's in like Africa. You know, they all seem to get together and school up, why? Because there's safety in numbers. The same reason why you wouldn't send your five-year-old, six-year-old child on Halloween night trick-or-treating by itself. Why? Because there are predators out there. So the fish do the same thing. There's, there's predators out there. So during this big move they're going to make to look for food, they're going to come together in big schools. And like I said, safety in numbers. So this is one of the ways we're going to target those schools of fish. Now my live scope has been down for about three, almost four weeks now, but that ain't stopping me from catching them. I'm still being able to put them in the boat. I'm just doing the old school way. Now, for one, before I get started, I know there's a brush pile about 30 yards to my right. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a marker buoy uh, so I can mark this brush pile. I don't buy marker buoys when I already got one right here. Just a simple stopper and some line, some mono, any type of line. And I'm, I'm gonna, I typically, I just pull about 15 foot of line and just tie it on to a, a the bobber. And then I put about a quarter to a half ounce lead as my weight. Whenever I see my brush, I'm gonna drop it right on top of the brush. So let me go ahead and get this made and I'll show y'all that. Okay, so I got my lead, my stopper, and about 15, 16 foot of 
mono line. It's gonna be my marker buoy. So I'm gonna drive over the brush pile, and when I see the brush pile, I'm just gonna throw the lead out behind the boat, and it's gonna, the stopper should float right, right above the brush pile. Now, based off of how deep of water you in, lets you know how much line you wanna put out. You don't wanna be in 20 foot of water with 15 foot of line and dropping this in the water, cause you're gonna, it's gonna go underwater. So if your brush pile is in 10 foot, give it an extra five feet. And I believe this brush pile is 10 or 12 feet. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, y'all. Okay. So y'all can see that stopper is right there. And I'm gonna take this lead, it's tied on to that stopper. And when I, when I drive over the brush pile, my transducer is on this side, so I'm just gonna take it and simply throw it out the back as soon as I see my brush pile. And keep in mind, when you when you dropping a marker buoy or anything like that, and you're about to drive over your brush pile, when you come over the brush pile, or you when you ease up on it, face into the wind, and then throw your boat in neutral. That way you'll drift over it, and you'll get a clearer image on your down imaging or your two your 2d that's just one tip that'll help you mark it better and as you drift over and you see that brush pile you want to take it you want to take it and throw it out i'm easing up on the brush pile i can see it so i'm gonna toss that out it's in place so I'm gonna show that to y'all. This is why I slow down. As I came up over here, as I came up on, I cut the engine and I drifted right across. So it kind of helps depict what I'm about to fish. This is a bunch of fish. So my cursor lets me know that, you know, I could, on the top of that brush pile, I'm gonna start fishing at 6.5 feet deep around that stopper. So I just marked a good pile. Let's see if we can get him. Just gonna throw out towards that bobber. Let it sink. Wind it in slow. I missed him, I had a bump. What I'm using, I'll show it to you. A Roadrunner jig, like a Bobby Garland, blue and yellow, y'all can see it. It's got a little, I want a little flash today. I'll try it again. Throw it out. About five seconds, wind it in, slow. I got him, got him. Feels like a good one too. Oh gosh. First fish. Gosh. A white bass. That's a good one too. It's a pretty fish. Pretty fish. We'll keep him. Got him, got him. Oh yeah. Pretty fish. So we know I have located a school of crappie on a brush and I just know that I was throwing around my homemade marker buoy, which is the yellow stopper out there. So now let's get to the live scope. I said you can make it yourself for under $5 because it really is the truth. It really is the truth. Now, I know that I'm casting in the right direction, but what live scope does is 
pinpoint exactly where the fish are located. A lot of guys, they can watch that, that the, the live scope and see the fish swimming around. But what happens when the fish decide, you spook them and they come off, they, they leave the brush pile. Well, here's the cure to that. Just a regular hook and a stopper. Now I got about 15 feet of uh, mono line stream tied to this hook and I got it going through the stopper here. So what I gotta do now is catch me a fish and then I'ma hook him, I'ma take that hook and I'ma hook that fish through the back and I'ma throw him back. It's just like the movies when you watch how the cops infiltrate, you know, the gang members. You know, they, are, uh, they gotta become the gang members. So it's kind of the same thing. You're gonna take a fish out of the school, hook him, and you mark him with this, and he's gonna swim right back into the school. Now, that's why I use clear lines. So, you know, in case you get, you're, they ever get in the mood that they are line shy. So hook him in the back, throw him back out, and he'll lead you into the school. Now, since that fish is in the school, if the school decides to move, you'll be able to follow them fish just by this simple method. So when everybody else is trying to figure out how they can get on the stay on the school of fish, you already got your undercover fish right here, which in my head, you are following the fish around just like you would if you had live scope. So some of y'all might be able to do this for free. You already got a stopper, already got some line, already got a hook. Hey, that's what you gotta do. So I'm gonna go ahead and catch me a, 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 a fish and I'm hooking me in the back and I'm gonna show it to you. Y'all should be able to see that yellow marker buoy out there. I mean, well, the stopper. I'm just gonna throw past the stopper, let it sink five, six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, just like that. I'm gonna wind it in real slow. Got him. There he is. There he is. That's a good one, too. Woo! Look at that. Good one. All right. So let me take this out. Got him out. Set the rod down. Take my hook. Just take my hook and I'm just gonna hook them right here. That's it. Just gonna hook them. I'm gonna toss them back out. There he goes. Another good one on. Good one. Just following that other fish around. And look, I got another one. Whew, that's a good one. Got him. Another good one. God. Oh yeah, he swallowed that. Look at that, another good one. It's a pretty fish. Just keep following the school. And the best thing about this is that most of them, they stay within their age group. You know, as far as the small crappy will stay with the small crappy and the bigger crappy, well, they stay with the bigger crappy too. You know, safety in numbers, that's how, that's how you gotta think. So you get you a couple different stoppers and make you a few live scopes or a few trackers. And whenever you catch a baby, throw him, throw him with one color. Catch you a big one, put a different, another color on him. Have two or three stoppers out there and then follow that school. So when they roaming around, you'll be able to follow them and catch the good size. All right, let's get back to it. 
I got him. Whoa. Another good one. Goodness. Woo-wee. Catching some good ones. Following. <laughs> Following. The live scope around. <laughs> Put him in the... Oh, see that basket gonna be full in a second. Y'all can see that the yellow stopper is still there. That's my original marker. Now look over here. Look at the green one. 20 foot away. Let's me know that, that crap is still is on the brush pile at the at the back of the brush pile around the other school. So I can pinpoint exactly where I want to throw. I'm gonna throw out past the green and then count it down five seconds and see if I can't catch another one of his buddies. Got him. Look at that. Woo wee. Another good one. Another good one. Oof. I think that. There we go. Look at that one. Nice. He about swallowed it. If you can look right behind him, you see that? The green bar, the green barber is telling on him. See, that's that live scope. Man. I'm telling you it's gonna be good eating. Guaranteed to put more fish in a boat. Look at that green stopper out there. You can see it. He's telling on all his friends. When I'm, I'm, I'm done fishing. I'm done fish for about an hour and 25 minutes. I'm just going to pick up my last fish. The one I started with. Let me grab my bobber back. All right. We got him here. Let's pull them back on up. Come on back. There he is. Still hooked in the back. Y'all can see him. And he is a good keeper, so I'm gonna put him in the in the box too. <laughs> we will get a count in a minute. All right, y'all. I've got, I just did the count, a total of 34 in an hour and 25 minutes, more like an hour and 27 minutes, but uh, 34, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I just wanted to do this video. So y'all could check it out. See that this method works. Thirty-four, and we got some good slabs in there. Definitely some good slabs. I ain't complaining. It's been a good day. Uh, I'm gonna head back. Reason I put this out, because I told my buddy, I was like, I only got about two, three hours. It looked like I was able to get what I wanted in basically an hour and a half, 34. That ain't bad at all. So listen, y'all gotta try this method. You wanna put more fish in the boat, this transition, anytime you, it works for bass. Uh, a lot of time I see bass busting and I'll try to catch me a small bass just so I can uh, hook the live scope to them. And I'll follow that school around and end up catching 15, 20 uh, bass in that school, you know. So, method does work. If you enjoy this information, if you learned something, hey, give me that thumbs up. You know, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. You know, I got more tips and tricks coming soon. Hopefully, uh, Garmin to get my live scope, my new live scope ready. And I'll be able to show y'all how I go about using my live scope to find fish and to understand their, what they do, how they how they move, you know, so y'all can stay tuned for that. Uh, I had a couple people ask me about supporting the channel. Hey, I'll 
uh, in the description below, I'll put some links so you can support the channel. I got Cash App, PayPal, that type thing. Hey, I appreciate you for watching. This has been another episode of Walking on Water. Hey, y'all be blessed.